Assalamu alaikum. So let's continue what we were talking about last time. Uh, in our last lecture, we talked about basic or the basic requirements that should be present in order for the child to be able to acquire his first or her first language. You remember we said there must be language contact. And the child should have contact with a language in order to be able to acquire this or that language. And we gave the example of Jenny as evidence on language contact and as evidence on the critical period which lasts or which is about the age of 12 between 12 and 13 if you remember so these requirements are necessary for any child to acquire language اللي هي language contact and physical ability if the child is able physically able he can of course or she can acquire language otherwise it is impossible to acquire language if the child suffers from any kind of defect physical defect I mean يعني he or she cannot hear properly or he or she cannot produce sounds properly you know the organs of speech starting from the lung ending with the lips are necessary for speech production and the brain of course is necessary for uh, speech recognition or language recognition if there is any defect in one of these uh, areas i mean organs of speech uh, or the brain uh, children are not able to acquire language and we said last time that uh, language acquisition first language acquisition is not genetic that's to say is it has nothing to do with genetics uh, يعني, uh, it depends on the environment we are living in if you take a child and put him in an English environment he is going or she is going to acquire English language. Put him in a Portuguese uh, environment, he or she is going to acquire uh, the Portuguese language. Put him in a Spanish environment and he or she is going to acquire Spanish language. So ability and language contact. And if you remember again, 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 we gave the example of Jenny. Jenny is, is a very good example on the loss of language contact. If there is no language contact, you cannot acquire language. Jenny, as I said, is a good example on the loss of language contact. If you lose your contact with another language or any language, you are not able to acquire that language. Moreover, Jenny is a good example on the critical period that we talked about. Between 12 and 13. A very good example. Okay. Uh, this is, or these are the main points we talked about last time. Now, let's move to talk about the acquisition schedule. Of course, normal children are able to acquire language at a certain age. But this age is different from one person to another, from one child to another, from one gender or sex to another. Yani, uh, some children are able to produce language at the age maybe of 8 months 
طبعا not by, by language I don't mean full language I'm going to talk about this later on some people are able I mean some children are able to produce language at the age of 12 months so this is something relative you know relative nisbi it is different as I said between boys girls and it depends on age يعني, uh, some some children are able as I said to produce language at the age of eight months some have a sort of delay احنا مو حتى بعوايدنا نقول هذا تأخر uh, his language production is delayed so it depends on many things activity language contact uh, maybe some biological factors uh, there is no need to talk about them right now this is out of the scope of our lecture so there are certain factors that may affect the production and the recognition of language so children have some biological capacity or ability to cope with language this ability this capacity is different from one person to another from one child to another as I said there is always discrepancy difference there are differences concerning the exact age of language production some start at the age of Eight months, maybe twelve months, maybe ten months. It it, it depends on the uh, some biological factors, some biological abilities. But in most cases, in all cases, if we have a child at home, we always try to make sure that the child is able to produce language or is able to understand language. That's why. The first actually stage in language acquisition is not the production of language. It is not the production of language. Rather, it is the recognition of language. Why is this? Because children start to develop the listening skill or the listening ability in language teaching we use the word listening skill but now it is just an ability it is just an ability children develop their listening ability before they can produce language well, this is something axiomatic because the first stage in language production is listening, not production. Children first recognize language by listening. They listen to the language. And if we have a child at home and we realize that he or she can listen to us, can listen, and of course by listen, I mean listen and understand our language or our gestures or whatever in this case we become happy we are happy that this child is able to understand language and in the future he or she is going to produce language okay so how could I, I know how could I know that this child is able to understand language I actually test his listening I test by for example clicking my fingers I do like this I click my fingers okay if he turns around to the source of the sound it means he or she can understand me or he, he can recognize actually the sound he or she can recognize the source of the sound so this child has a good listening 
ability. He has got a good physical ability to understand language or to realize sounds. If he realizes sounds, then he can realize language and in the future he can produce language. So the first stage in the recognition of language is, is listening. He or she can listen to language. Okay. Uh, now, before we talk about the stages of language acquisition, first language acquisition, let's talk about what is called caregiver speech. Caregiver speech. Look, this is caregiver speech. What is meant by caregiver? Uh, by the way, in some references, in some books, it is written as caretaker speech. Not care. يعني لاحظوا الكلمتين تستخدم. Both words are used. Caregiver. And care. هذا موجود in some books. Take. We mean by this, we mean the language of those who take care of children. Now, if you have a child at home, you take care of that child or you give care to that child, you are a caregiver. And you use a language, you use a language which is similar to that child's language, similar to the language of that child. That's why it is sometimes called motherese language or child directed speech. That is to say, this is a type of language or a language which is similar to the language of the child. Now, if you have a child at home, نفترض, you have a child at home, and you want to, to talk to him, to talk to her, you speak to him, right? You speak to her. Now, are you going to use your regular language? or normal language, the language that you use with your friends, which is very complex, very sophisticated, right? Are you going to use this language to talk to a, to a child using a very complex language, sophisticated language. And by your normal language, I mean the language that you use in your everyday life communication. Very difficult language, complex. Not suitable for children. Not suitable for children. Are you going to use this language to talk to your children at home? No, of course. No, of course. You are going to use a language which is similar to the language produced by the child. What are the main properties of child language? The main property actually, the main property is that the language of children is very simple, is very simple full of abnormalities full of abnormalities so you are going to use the same language talking to that child or to those children you are going to use a language which is very simple full of 
repetition full of repetition characterized by repetition characterized by simple structures not simple language in general or only but simple structures simple in using words right and all the time it is similar to the language of the child it is similar to the language of the child for example for example if the child use a word like for example hum or hum to address food right اغلب اطفالنا use the word hum or um to address food you are going to use the same word for food if you talk to him you talk to him اتقل له do you want hum hum treat hum ما تقل له you want food or you want a sandwich or you want whatever you want hum you use the same word used by the child and repetition dada mama baba these are repeated syllables these are words that are characterized by repeated syllables you see one syllable is repeated and this is a characteristic of children language we use short syllables but they are repeated we use the same words we use the same even meanings or semantics that are used by children children their language is characterized by over generalization تعميم. for example every rounded object every rounded object is ball كل شيء مدور يسمي طوبة مثلا so you are going to call or address any rounded, rounded object as ball if you talk to the child كل شيء ايضا انت شوفه مدور تقول له this is a ball this is a ball or if the child addresses any man with a, with gray hair you know gray hair يعني مشيب any man with gray hair the child is going to call for example هذا جدو جدو or grandpa okay you are going to use the same word talking to the child again if you see any old man with gray hair you will say this is grandpa or a woman granny granny يعني جدة. it is not his granny right but she is old and he is not his grandfather but he is old with gray hair you see وتلاحظون in our society all cars are called what by children huh? yes we use the same word عن او نقول this is deed sounding or duplicating the horn of these cars this is over generalization this is a language used by children we use their language when we are taking care of them when we are giving care to them that's why this is called caregiver speech or caretaker speech 
و sometimes it is called input إلى آخره So it is characteristically simplified speech style adopted by someone who spends a lot of time interacting with a young child is called caregiver speech. Okay. So this is your language when you talk to your children at home, whether they are your sons, daughters, brothers, sisters. Look at this interesting conversation between a mother and a child look at this short and interesting conversation between a mother and her child let me put it here Okay. Okay. Hopefully this is clear. The mother says, look. Look. And the child touches pictures. Touches pictures. Mother, what are those? Child vocalizes a bubble string and smiles. Actually, he or she doesn't produce any kind of language. Just making noise babbling babbling the mother says yes there are uh, there are rabbits does he say rabbits no he just produces sounds but the mother is trying to use a language similar to his language or she is trying to use language style similar to his language similar to his behavior yes there are rabbits as if he is saying they are rabbits. Actually, he is saying nothing. And the child vocalizes, smiles, looks up at mother. Smiles or vocalizes. Mother laughs. Yes, rabbits. She understands that his vocalization of these sounds and his babbling, his smile, as if they are part of his language or as if they are meaningful words and now in the first sentence when he produces babbling she understands that this is a word or a language here he or she is smiling and for her this is a language that's why she begins to laugh yes rabbits vocalizes smiles and she says yes laughs look at this conversation look at very interesting about how caregiver speech takes place the mother keeps saying words and the child keeps smiling but actually the mother understands his behavior his vocalization his babbling, his smiles, as if they are part of his language, as if they are language itself. So, actually, she, she is trying to behave in a way that is similar to his language, or she is trying to produce a style which is similar to his language. Okay? Now, Let's go to the stages that children follow in acquiring their language. Stages. There are stages that children all pass through in acquiring language. Gina the first stage listening. We test by listening. We click our fingers. And we can understand that the child is able to produce language. لكن بعدين نجي على cooing and babbling وخلاهن سوا. 
they are put together because they are interrelated they are interrelated الكوينج احنا نسميه بالعربي هو المناغات the child now at this stage is able to produce random sounds random sounds من اللي جن هذا random sounds you know the child at the stage of eight months or six months, eight months to ten months, gonna hide ten with six with eight. They are relative. They are relative. They are different from one child to another. At this stage, the child hasn't got any control over his muscles. He has no control over his body. So he begins to move his hands, legs, random moves, random moves. If the حرك جسمه بدون وعي, unconsciously, he begins to move his hands, his legs, his muscles, And one of these muscles are the muscles that are responsible for his lungs and for his mouth, for his tongue. Remember, these are random moves. And the air begins to move. The air begins to move from his lungs to the mouth and because of this random movement some sounds are going to be coming out some sounds come out randomly when go if you sort of the the يعني الرمز مال هنا ما موجود على الحاسبة احنا عم تستفهم جوا هالنقطة غ غ ونقول الطفل بدأ يناغي or ج or ك these are random sounds usually followed by a short vowel أيضا الرمز ما له ما موجود هنا let me show you إذا أقدر precisely this is the symbol of the sound produced by or, or the vowel produced by the child because this is a very short vowel it doesn't need any effort it doesn't need an effort and now he is able to produce random sounds what babbling in a babbling now by the way the word babble babble babbling taken from the word بابل اللي هي بابل بابل اللي صار ببابل جاب نبو خذ نصر الأسرة اليهود ومن مختلف يعني جاب أسرة مختلف القوميات أثناء بناء برج بابل فاختلطت الألسن كانوا الناس يتحدثون بعدة لغات they were talking in many languages in Babel long ago so uh, languages mixed together ومن أتى طلعت أنا كلمة البلبلة بلبلة هي اختلاط الأصوات بابلينج اللي هي نقول عليها بابلينج So at this stage قلنا the child is able to produce random sounds where the easiest sound to be produced is the sound ب ليش ب because it is bilabial الب والماء are bilabial sounds they need only the lips they need no effort. They need no effort. They are produced by the lips, the movements of the lips only. And the shortest vowel short and again it doesn't need any effort. produce 
a word like ba ba ويبدا يكررها صارت با با ما ما That's why these are almost universal They are not 100% universal But they are almost universal Because با با and ما are Voiced consonants by labial they do not need that effort مو مثل ال voice ال voice اللي هي العفو ب وال وال yes ال ب مقارنة بال ب they are voiced and they do not need effort so the child is going to produce them ولذلك حتى قلنا بل بل هي صح من اختلاط الأصوات لكن يبدي يطلع ب ب ما so with this short vowel راح تطلع لنا أصوات like با با ما ما with repetition and the first word the child is producing most of the time is با با and ما ما or just one syllable just ما just با and we begin to laugh why we laugh because we begin to recognize that this child now is smart enough uh, is hilarious enough because he can produce a sound like or a word like ba and ma وهنا ندخل الى one word stage the child you see between 12 and 8 18 months يعني شوف الرينج من 12 الى 18 6 شهر فرق that's why we said they are different from one child to another. Between 12 and 18 months, children begin to produce a variety of recognizable single unit utterances. This period traditionally is called one word stage. One word stage is characterized by speech in which single terms are uttered for everyday objects such as milk, cookie, cat, cub, snoop, إلى آخره. Now the child gonna دخل إلى ال one word stage. And at this stage, he is going to use just one word. But this one word is so meaningful. Usually a noun or a verb. طبعا in language we have four major categories noun, verb, adjective, adverb اللي هي lexical words but at this stage the child or this or هذا جزء من 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 ذكاء الطفل this is part of the intelligence of children he can produce words that stand for meaning or a meaning that is that could be transferred by a sentence so when he says milk this is one word right one word when he says milk it means what it means I want milk you see one word but it is meaningful. I want milk. Or I am hungry. I am hungry. So one word that stands for full meaning. وطبعاً من يعرف هذا meaning؟ caregiver أو caretaker رح يجينا عليه قبل شوي. His mother, his father, his uh, sisters and brothers are able to recognize his language, are able to recognize the meaning of his language. So when he says, for example, a word like daddy, it means here comes daddy. 
here comes daddy we can translate his words into meaningful sentences we can translate his words into meaningful sentences depending on the acquaintance we have with him or the situations we have with him later on later on he is going to move to what is called two word stage هنا شنو اللي راح يصير قلنا in English we have four major categories noun, verb, adjective, adverb the child is going to real realize the relationships that hold between the words of language مثلا يعرف an adjective is connected to a noun strongly connected to a noun a noun is strongly connected to a verb an adverb is strongly connected to a verb راح يعرف العلاقات between the words of the language not words but categories he is going to realize the connection between these categories so he is going to produce sentences like this mommy gone which means my mother has gone you see sentence but it is replaced by just two words noun and a verb noun and a verb لاحظ ال verb is in the third conjugation تصريف الثالث in the past participle without have or has you see so two words with connected relationships بعدين هنا راح ينتقل إلى what is called something very important he is going to move to what is called telegraphic speech telegraphic language telegraph telegraph شنو يعني telegraph you know telegraph انتم ما ملحقين عليه التلغراف هو البرقية واشرح لكم اياها بالعربي وبالسريع حتى تعرفون شنو المفهوم مال قبل ما كنت فالعالم تستخدم البرقيات فلما تروح للبريد ترسل برقية يحاسبونك على عدد الكلمات كل ما زيد الكلمات زيد الفلوس يعني كل كلمة عليها مبلغ فشو تسوي انت حتى تقلل المبلغ مال البرقية ها انت راح تقلل عدد الكلمات يا كلمات راح تشيلها من البرقية you are going to get rid of words that you think they are not necessary not necessary for what for the meaning مثلا you are going to delete the a on some here there right all high articles with determiners in general will qualifiers will quantifiers are go uh, are all going to be deleted this is the characteristic of a telegraph the child actually passes through the same stage when he is using a language similar to telegraphs which means he is going to use sentences sentences but these sentences are characterized by the omission of unnecessary words 
school good yesterday the school was good yesterday for them or my school was good yesterday he or she is going to get rid or omit or forget about words that are not necessary special especially function words no determiner no article no qualifiers no quantifiers he or she is going to use only main words nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs and sometimes even even adjectives and nouns are deleted from his or her for her uh, language that's why we call it telegraphic speech or a telegraphic stage is it okay and i think if you have children at home you can look at their language you will see it is characterized by this type of speech telegraphic speech and at this stage we said they are going to use over generalization especially at the level of semantics الآن يصير عندهم ما يسمى بالسيمانتيك acquisition the acquisition of semantics the acquisition of semantics of words and because they have limited vocabulary vocabulary they have limited vocabulary they begin to generalize again every rounded object is going to be called a ball every child is going to be called dad every old man or woman is going to be called granny right these are over generalizations acquired and developed by the child hopefully things are clear for the present time we shall continue the topic in our next lecture thank you